Welcome to the Fash Avenue. I'm Joan Kelly Walker, and joining me today is my longtime friend, Sylvia Mentella, who is the Chief Marketing Officer for Mentella Corporation. Sylvia, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. So Sylvia, I feel like we have so much to talk about and I'm so sorry that I missed your event the other night that you moderated the incredible panel for You for Change. What was that all about and why were you, why were you passionate enough that you wanted to be the moderator for it? Um, well, first of all, there's always next year, Joan, so we'll see that. Okay, I'll okay. be there. It's no worries. Um, you know, uh, You for Change is a, is, is a really, really a grassroots organization I'm involved with multiple philanthropy um, initiatives, but you know, this one is so grassroots that raising 50 or 60 or $85,000 is actually what we raised on that evening, completely unexpected. I mean, that will f fund an organization like that for six months. So when you see that kind of return, um, it's, it's, so, um, it's so satisfying. And, and um, You for Change is an organization uh, which um, educates youth. Um, who are um, come from um, it, challenged families or challenged backgrounds. Some of these youth are homeless. Some come from families of drug abuse, drug abuse themselves, um, violence. And so, you know, they really have nowhere to go. It's based out of Regent Park. Um, so they come from, from all throughout the city. And they're provided a 12-week program and mentorship so that they can just have those basic abilities to get in front of an employer or have some um, experience or a diploma in the arts, um, fashion, photography, film. And so um, we thought, you know, we want to raise, we want to raise some, some money for this organization. We, we want to raise awareness. And they approached me and said, well, let's do a gala. And, and it was like, I mean, you know, John, like, mm -hmm. I mean, how many galas do we go to yeah. a year, which I'm not by any means minimizing them, but it has to be authentic too. And so this kind of an organization, because it's so grassroots and, 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 and um, intimate, intimate yeah. right? So I really felt, so my recommendation was, you know what, let's, how about we get some people who are involved and really experts and in their, in their respective fields of fashion and let's do a panel mm -hmm. and um, and sometimes these things need to evolve and, and right. starting with a panel to really define what the cause is yeah and I, I do have to ask how do you de determine which things you can get behind because you're a busy woman you have a lot on your plate you've got your animal sanctuary you're heavily involved in the fashion industry Everyone is coming to you for support for all the local charities. How do you determine which ones? Um, you know, it really, you, it's so hard to say no. It is. You know, especially um, when you've got emerging talent in fashion or um, charities that really require um, and come to you for funding. And I think that, you know, we're so blessed. Anybody who's blessed and has an opportunity to give back in any mm -hmm. way, whether it's their time or a run or a walk for cancer, whatever it is, you know, you, you have to give back. I just... Or sitting on a committee. Whatever, yes. exactly. Just, you've got to, you know, you've, I, I think it's really critical and um, to society. And so, um, how do I choose? Um, I, it kind of comes down pretty, to people. Is it that does, what I mean? and it's hard for me to say no. I really rarely say no, and it really is about the people and the connection. So often, I will at least give the opportunity to visit the charitable or the charity, and then if it's something that I can also really um, genuinely um, raise money for, or it it's something that I can actually help them with, I'll get involved. And some of them, it's just you know, it, it doesn't really fit. Um, so. Hard to say no, and mm -hmm. has to be the right fit. Right, and you've had so much experience with this now. There, there are very few people, I would say, in the world that have chaired so many events. Uh, often, people get one charity that's their charity of choice, and they really rally behind it. But you have so many hats and so many different charities that that people turn to you as such an expert in the world of philanthropy. 
And, you know, you and I go back a number of years. Well, when you yeah, were younger, yeah. like I'm getting these phones, yeah. when, you know, did you think this is my passion? This is where I should be leading because you're truly a leader. It's very kind of you to say thank you. That's really beautiful. And we do go back a yes. long time, all yes. the way back to when we're, our kids were younger and in school. And um, who knew we would, you know, be here Fast forward uh, 10 years later, 15 years later, and have not have aged at all. It's amazing. Which I think is, yes. is, is um, yeah. yeah. See, we're doing something right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, keeping busy. I think that's so important, keeping the mind busy. But um, that's thank you for that compliment. And um, for the most part, the charitable initiatives I'm involved in, other organizations have to do with youth, have to do with children, um, and are, are benefiting youth or children or um, animals, you know, on a, on a smaller scale because I have my own foundation. And then um, also, you know, Canadian fashion mm -hmm. um, and emerging fashion designers and, you know, trying to uh, be an end consumer, um, a, a mentor, a guide, um, also sometimes being a liaison to introductions that they all otherwise wouldn't have received, you know, through Hold Renfrew or through a Canadian retailer. Um, so I, yeah, I sit so on a lot. There's, a, there's, a, there's another, uh, you know, the, the same question is, is true for fashion. How do you decide which fashion designers, which fashion houses that you're going to rally behind? Because when you wear a certain designer, everybody takes notice. Oh, that's really kind. Thank it's you. very true. I appreciate that. Um, I think I'm lucky enough, to, first of all, to have this platform that's become a little bit global because of the traveling that I do. And I really like to, um, I make it a mandate to at least take a few pieces of Canadian designer clothing wherever I go. Um, because I do attend the Paris and Milan mm -hmm. London Fashion Weeks. And so um, introducing that and that, that brand, whether I'm wearing it or wherever we are, um, so it gets some sort of recognition. Um, and, Canadian fashion designers, because I've been involved in Canadian fashion for well over a decade, several of them are really my good friends. Mm -hmm. And then I see these young emerging. I'm also involved with Canadian Arts and Fashion Awards. Um, I chaired the nominating committee and now I sit as a judge and I was there from its inception. So I see all these applications and all these kids and they're, they, I shouldn't even say kids, they're, you know, these young adults who have put so much time and energy and effort and I see what it takes in that work. And, um, uh, you know, I feel like they, they, something connects, right? Whether it's mm. a jewelry line or a clothing line or an accessories line, it just connects to me um, and my um, style. Uh, and if it doesn't to me, it, it does to a number of other people around me. That I'll make the introduction to. Mm -hmm. you know, this so do they, my... do they come to you and say, I have this idea of something that will look great on you? Or do you say, you know what? I've got this really great idea. Both. Can you make this happen? Yeah, both. So it's a real collaboration. Really both, yeah. And I, and I also give a lot of credit because it takes courage to reach out to um, somebody that you don't know. And I, I, I really recommend that just to fashion designers mm -hmm. or anybody starting out. Um, don't say no to anything as long as it's legal. You know, take every opportunity that you're given. Um, and the second is, is you know, I always tell my kids, if you try, you have a chance. If you don't try, you have no chance. So try, you know, reach out. If you see them at an event, send them a DM, uh, LinkedIn. I mean, there's so many, you know, platforms now that you can reach out to individuals. And um, I, I commend the taking, having the courage to do that because that's mm -hmm. not easy. We all need a break in life. You know, we didn't all just start out, you know, where, where we are today. We all had to start somewhere and we all got that break. And so if, if, if I can, you know, be that person that helps to guide, I think I've, I've helped a few um, and I'm really honored and I stay with them because I love to watch their growth and I'm really proud. So let's talk about the industry within Canada. Do you find it's very Toronto-centric? What is being done to help unify designers in the industry all across the country? And I know that you represent us so well on the world stage. How does the world represent Canada? What do you tell people about the industry within Canada? Um, well, it's definitely a 
very strongly emerging market. Mm -hmm. If you just even look at the population and how much um, Toronto has grown in the last decade, our population, our culture, our diversity, that all adds to um, why Canada is such an important place for these large fashion houses to bring their resources here. And they do. You know, they're opening up a Dior store on Bloor Street, the Versace. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many that we could name that are these huge fashion houses. And they're coming here. I mean, they're not coming here because they're coming in blind. They've done their due diligence. Yes. They have, you know, they've, they've, they've made sure that all the research is in place before they're going to spend millions going into a market. And so I think that that speaks volumes for us. They've done a lot of that footwork and seen that, that there's something here. There's a consumer here in Canada. Um, and in Toronto and Vancouver and Montreal. Um, so um, it, it, needed, it needed, the timing had to be right because if they would have come in too soon, they may have been disappointed. Lack of sales, at the end of the day, it's a business. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to, there's a bottom line. People have to answer it to somebody, a director, a bank, an investor. So there has to be a bottom line. Um, now is the right time to come in and over the last few years. Um, and that's that's great for us uh, because the more successful those brands are and those international brands are, the other brands will want to come on board too. Right. So, do you love to shop? Where do you shop? No, I don't like to shop. Now, of course, yeah, I'm I totally love to shop. Where's your um, favorite place? You know, I um, I like to go to the, to the Canadian diners, designers. The Canadian designers, because of my relationship with them, I can go to them directly. So um, Michael Kale, Greta Constantine, um, Zoff, um, Stephen Carras, who I'm wearing today, um, I can reach out to them directly, which is fantastic. Um, and then, you know, there's great institutions, Canadian institutions like The Room, Bay, Holt Renfrew. Um, we should support them mm -hmm. because they are our Canadian foundation that's really important. The support of each other, if we could all just, and I think we're getting it now. You know, I think it took a little bit of time to get there, but I think people are really understanding it. Um, online has been a bit of a challenge, I think, mm -hmm. but also with chaos comes opportunity. And so it gave now these retailers that didn't have an e-commerce site, they realized, oh man, we have to get with the times, we need to build it out so that people can you know, instead of waiting for a week or two weeks to get something from the United States or Europe, you're going to have it the next day because the room or Bay or Holt Renfrew or whatever organization, um, they have uh, they have a platform online. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a big benefit too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huge. Yeah. Huge. You know, one thing we haven't talked about are all the shows in Canada. It, it's, for me, honestly, there's like 10 or 12 shows. They're all called Toronto Fashion Week or, or Women's Fashion Like they're all similar and they're all kind of yeah. overlapping with each other. Yeah. Do you think there needs to be somebody managing a great big calendar, spreading it out and defining more clearly what they are? Is that beneficial? I, I actually think that in theory, that is a genius idea. And um, that is a model that New York, Paris, London, Milan, the biggest fashion weeks in the world, mm -hmm. that is the model that they go by. They have a calendar. This is, you've got a nine o'clock on a Tuesday, take it. And yeah. so that calendar is shared internationally so everybody knows where it is. I think what happened with Toronto is that for, um, you know, 2000 to about 2016, we had Toronto Fashion Week, the brand. And we had these huge, um, corporations that were the presenting sponsors. We had IMG for four years. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, July of 2016, I remember it so well because it was July 2016 and they pulled out. And here we have three months until we're showing Toronto Fashion Week and we've got m multiple, over 150 designers who have invested already their fabric, their designs, their time, their resources. Um, makeup artists, they've all, you know, allocated their time. So there was, it was a real frenzy. And so I think a lot of people, um, I know a lot of people wanted to rise to the occasion to do something. We couldn't watch this, this collapse that we spent 16 years mm -hmm. building and now it was just literally collapsing. And so I think out of that came the birth of these smaller, these smaller, like indie type, um, 
fashion uh, productions like um, the collections um, or a reset and then um, Yorkville Village you know that was um, mm -hmm. established uh, that was Toronto Fashion Week and that was moved to Yorkville Village we now have the Indigenous Fashion Week which showed for the first time in 2018 so um, and they're all different platforms so I get why it could be very confusing but if you do your homework a little bit you'll you'll find they all speak to a little bit of a different and the designers all choose to go there um, mm -hmm. so it is confusing and it all is at different times which is actually a good thing too because you know you've got the um, you've got you know fashion week starting in the beginning of January or I'm sorry the beginning of September then you've got one near the end the Toronto Fashion Week the Tom, Tom um, the men's uh, the Yorkville um, and it's not your standard runway, which is great, mm -hmm. but the, the, the issue or the, I see the, the downfall of um, your traditional runway uh, fashion show is that it's very, it's more exclusive. And I just think that's really old thinking. I don't think, I, I can't, I don't think that a fashion week should be exclusive. I think it should be inclusive. Yes. I think that anybody that wants to attend or has a love or has a passion or is a buyer or a client, everybody should be able to attend. And I know Michael Kale, for example, that was really important to him. This past fashion week, he showed at the Royal Ontario Museum. And rather than a big runway, he did an installation. So a static show and all the models static. And he had hundreds, I mean, it, it was blown out of capacity. I think they had four or 500 mm -hmm. people. And he said, you know what, I don't, I just, I don't want it to be an exclusive. I want everybody who wants to come and support me. I'm so grateful for that support. I want everybody to have the opportunity to yeah. see my show. Beautiful. Yeah, you know. So you really have to think outside the box and that's the way things are evolving and yeah. everything online is all brand new. People are just forging their own way because there is, there's no path. Yeah. You, you have to sort it out. So seeing as you... And you know what, in time to your point, maybe it will sort out. Yeah. You know, maybe they will come together. But I think right now, this is what we have. Mm -hmm. And we just have to... Um, we just Continue have to, support to think where, outside the box. Yeah, yeah. you know, and I, I think they did. Um, so we'll see where it goes. I have a lot of faith in Toronto. Yes. And I have a lot of faith in um, the people of Toronto. Me too. The fashion scene and yeah, and the designers. Yeah. It's incredible. So one last question: because you go to all the the fashion weeks, all the all the shows internationally. Um, okay, two part question: What do you tell people about the industry in Canada, and what do you learn from those shows that you think is doing so well that we need to incorporate here? Um, that's a good question. So, well, it's easy for me to praise Canada and Toronto. Um, I, I, I. You know, the first question when you meet people or you're involved, where are you from, Toronto? Oh, wow, Toronto. It's really interesting because I'll tell you 10 years ago when I used to say I'm from Toronto or Canada, people would say, oh, igloos, like buffalo yeah. on the street. And I'm like, what? Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, and that was just a genuine lack of, um, you know, it's before social media. So it was just a genu genu genuine lack of um, education. Uh, education. Yeah. Um, of, of, of knowledge and so now through social media I love it and I hate it I'm a love and hate of social media I think that it can be oh, I think we all are right like yeah. I think it can be a tremendous platform and I think it could be um, very dangerous too um, so um, uh, so I'm really, I really I love speaking to it and when I wear the designers who are Canadian, that just starts a conversation on their mm -hmm. own. They're fascinated by the fabrics and, and where it's produced, and so I can speak to that. Um, what I learned from attending the, the Paris, the Milan, or the London Fashion Weeks, they all cater to their own, um, they're all the same model, but they have their own interests. So for example, Milan really caters to the big fashion houses. So they make mm -hmm. sure that like Vers the Versace's and the, and the um, uh, Dolce Gabbana's or um, the huge houses are really on, on stage, mm -hmm. on, under the spotlight. Then you go to London and they really focus on the emerging talent. And then Paris, I mean, Paris is just a hub. Everybody comes to Paris. Yeah. It's the, the most, I think, iconic. Um, and so I think that what I've seen, what I like is that they've all found their own place. 
So sure, they all work under one umbrella of a fashion week, but they've all found their own niche to make that successful. And I think that's what Toronto is doing, exactly what we just spoke mm, about. Finding their own about niche. These, right, about these new little you know, sprouts coming out of something that the collapse in 2016 of the Toronto Fashion Week, mm -hmm. everybody's spreading out and finding on their own little niches. So that's okay. You know, it also produces, um, it produces uh, an industry um, where it's creative. Um, and, and we have, just have to feed that creativity. Um, and, and we do that by supporting it. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so what's the best way people can support the fashion industry here in Canada? Just a lay person, not someone that goes to Fashion Weeks internationally, but just a regular person. Um, I think that um, supporting a designer, a lot of the designers now um, will range from, it's no longer that, you know, you have to buy a $5,000 dress or, you know, they've, they've, they've become wise to the demographic. There's mm -hmm. a younger demographic that wants to support, but they don't have the, the means. So, you know, they're starting out, they have these sort of entry label, mm -hmm. um, still under the same label, but an entry, entry brand like Michael Kale. He does a hoodie and a sweatshirt that says Michael Kale and it's a couple hundred dollars, which is a lot of money still, but you know, that's something that you can wear proud and you know, you evolve into fashion. Mm -hmm. I didn't start out like this by any means. I mean, I started, you know, when I was 16 or 17 years old, started shopping at Le Chateau or Stitches and putting together outfits mm -hmm. and they weren't brand names. Yeah, but that's where style comes yeah, in. Yeah, it was about styling. And now, you know, I'm fortunate to have the different, uh, a different reach, but that's where I started out. And it was about putting things together and feeling good and confident and looking good. And, and, um, and so I think that's where this generation, the younger generation, they really have it together. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you can also buy a ticket to a fashion show. That's 100%. a great way to support, or you could just follow a certain designer on social media and Absolutely. comment and like and, and you know talk about it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. So there's stuff you can do, and you're certainly doing all that you can, and we really appreciate it as part of the fashion industry in Canada. And so. you are too. I well, mean, you're just you. a dynamo. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm trying. No, Breakfast you, Club of Canada is my doing, charity, and that's what my brand's all job. about. And also, you know, with this, with the fashion, and 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 with the. Um, uh, with Fash Avenue and mm -hmm. all the other in initiatives that you're involved with, um, it's inspiring, you know. And 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 you you're a, you're a leader. You're really doing something, and it's just it's just not talk. You're really yeah. doing something. Thank you. Yeah. To your point, I I didn't know that I would be in this position where I had a bigger reach. Right. And I do think that there is a responsibility that we need to do something. Yeah. And this is something that I can do. And you know, you and I share that passion for fashion. So. Exactly. Well said. Over time we evolve. And mm -hmm. so we have to evolve um, our thinking. We have to evolve um, the positions we take, who we help, where we go. Um, it's just a part of uh, it's, 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 it's a part of evolving. It's a part of getting older and wiser. We're not older. I'm not saying that necessarily, <laughs> but, um, certainly not me. Yeah. Me yeah. Too. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so, um, but yeah, I, I see, I see a great future for Toronto. We're on a really good path. Um, and I can't wait to see where we are in five or 10 years. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Really my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Sylvia, thank you so much. My guest today has been Sylvia Mantella. Thank you for joining us as we stroll down the Fash Avenue.